Hello everybody, welcome to Baiju's 6th, 7th and 8th grade channel. I'm your teacher Aishwarya and in this video we are going to be solving the NCRT questions from the chapter Inside Our Earth. Now if you are someone very new who's visiting our channel for the first time, then let me tell you that the in-depth chapter explanation for this particular chapter has been done a few weeks back. So as you know, in one video we have covered the different layers of the earth and we've explored it in great detail. And in the second video we have covered rocks and minerals and the different types of rocks. So if you've not watched the concept explanation for the same, I would recommend that you watch those videos first before you start solving questions. But in this video, of course, we will be looking at all the exercise questions. Now, why are solving exercise questions very important? Now, first and foremost, you must be thinking, ma'am, normally it comes as homework questions for me, so it's very helpful. But one thing that we don't really think about is that these exercise questions do come in our examinations also. And in our examination, they may come for one mark, two marks, or maybe sometimes even for four, five marks. And if we get an idea of how to write the answers for, for all these exercise questions, it also makes it very simple when we are preparing for those exams. Which is why this video will be very helpful for all of the students watching this. So stay till the very end so that trust me, you will know how much it has helped you. And this could also be a quick revision of the chapter. So I recommend that you have your notebooks and textbooks open so that you can write the answers down simultaneously so that you don't want to watch it again and again just for the answer. But of course, if you do have it with you, let's get started. So the first question that we have here is answer the following. So there are many subparts here. So the first question that we have here is what are the three layers of the earth? Now this right here is not asking you to describe the layers, explain about the layers. It's just asking you what are the three layers. So you just need to state it down. And this right here can normally come for one mark. Now when we talk about the three layers of the earth, we know that there's the outermost crust, the middle mantle and the innermost core. So you just need to list these three layers down. So the answer here is the three layers of the earth are crust, core, um, crust, mantle and core. And you can mention that crust is the outermost layer, mantle is the middle layer and core here is the inner layer. Now here you don't need to go into the structural details of it because they've not asked for it in this particular question. So I hope now you are clear with this. Let's move on to the second one. Now the second one is also a pretty direct question which is asking you what is a rock? Now this is also normally a one mark direct question where they're not asking you to elaborate on rock formation or anything. They're just asking you what is a rock? Now when we talk about rocks we know that it is any natural mass which is made up of minerals, right? So when we say it is an aggregate of various minerals, it means that it is made up of various minerals. Now here we also know that it makes up the earth's crust and they come in different shapes, sizes, textures, so on and so forth. And we also know that they could be soft or hard or come in various colors. So when you're writing the answers, you can write any two points here. So you can start off by mentioning the main definition, which is that a rock is any natural mass of mineral matter that makes up the earth's crust. And now we know that it is made up of the earth's crust in itself is made up of different types of rocks, which comes in different textures, size and color. So if this, this right here comes for one mark, one point would suffice, but you can write the second pointer down as well so that your answer would look more complete and holistic. So I hope that you have written the answer down. In case if you want to write it, please pause the video so that you write it down and then you proceed to the next question. So let's move on to the third one. The third question is also a very direct question which can normally come for one mark, right? Where they're asking you to name the three types of rocks. Understand they're not asking you to explain, they're not asking you to elaborate, they're just asking you to name the three types of rocks. So when you, they're asking you to just name them, you just need to write down saying that the three types of rocks include igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks and your metamorphic rocks that are there. So when you're writing the answer, you just need to list it down one after the other in point format. You will get your marks completely, right? So presenting your answer is a very important thing when it comes to actually writing it down for two marks and three marks. Now we'll go on to the next one. Now the next question is, how are extrusive and intrusive rocks formed? Now here, as you can see, you need to talk about extrusive rocks. You need to talk about intrusive rocks. So this can come for two marks easily. And in some cases, this can even come as a point of difference for four marks, right? So if you get it for four marks, that means that two marks here goes for extrusive, two marks will go for intrusive. But if the question comes for two marks, then you just need to write one, one point each. But nonetheless, let's elaborate the answer for this. 
when we talk about extrusive and intrusive rocks. We know that this comes under the categorization of igneous rocks, right? Now, your igneous rocks in itself is formed by the solidification of molten magma. Now, we know that based on this, there are two kinds. You have your intrusive igneous rocks, which is formed by the cooling of magma in the interior of the earth. This diagram, if it is in, ingrained in your mind, you will then know the difference, right? Intrusive, think of it as inside, right? So here, of course, one common example you can give here is that of granite. Yes, we know that granite is an example of an intrusive igneous rock. But at the same time, we know that when the molten uh, magma that is there comes out, right, in the form of lava, and it comes out through the volcanoes, and they solidify on the surface of the earth, it results in the formation of extrusive igneous rocks. And a very common example of the same is basalt. So when you're writing the answer, make sure that these pointers are mentioned. So when you talk about extrusive, we are talking about the molten lava or the magma that is there, which the molten lava in this case, which is reaching the earth's surface and cooling down rapidly, right? Earth's surface is the key word, example here being basalt. While in the case of intrusive, when you see that the magma solidifies deep inside the earth's crust, it results in the formation of intrusive rocks. You can give the example here saying granite. So instead of molten lava, you can write molten magma here. Yes? So now I hope you've written the answers down because you will get two marks for the same. Now let's move on to the next one. Now the next question here is a very important question, which is, what do you mean by a rock cycle? Now, rock cycle question here could come for one mark and they're just asking you to define. But if this question says, what is rock cycle and explain, this question can easily come for three marks, um, in some cases four marks or five marks. So in that, that case, you will have to write the answer accordingly. So when they ask you, what do you mean by rock cycle? It's very simple. We know that it is a process of transformation of rocks from one type of rock to another with respect to certain changes and conditions in a cyclic manner, right? So that's why we call it as a rock cycle, not a rock process. We call it as a rock cycle because it's a cyclic process. Now, what exactly happens in a rock cycle? We know that there are various kinds of rocks, right? You have igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic. Now, your igneous rocks that are there, is formed. So let me just change my, uh, this color so that you're able to see properly. So when you talk about these igneous rocks, we know that igneous rocks are formed by the solidification of magma, right? And we know that these igneous rocks are what will further, yes? So let me just quickly change the color. These igneous rocks may undergo some, you know, erosion and weathering and they will form smaller particles called sediments. Now, when these sediments undergo high pressure and when they are, you know, sort of kept in a high pressure situation, results in the formation of your sedimentary rocks. Now, we know that these sedimentary rocks and your igneous rocks, when subjected to high temperature pressure, results in the formation of your metamorphic rocks. Now, your metamorphic rocks can also melt and go back to forming molten magma. So, you see this right here is a cyclic process that is happening. So, when it comes for four marks, you will have to list all these processes down. So when you're writing the answer, if it is one mark, you just need to mention this one point, that it is a process of transformation of one ty type of rock to another with respect to changes in condition. But if they ask you to elaborate, you will have to e write all these points down. So I'm just going to step aside so that you can take a screenshot of the same. Yes. So I hope you've taken a screenshot and you can write the answers down where all the important points are listed down. So let's get moving to the next set of questions. Now, the next question that we have here is, what are the uses of rocks in general? Now, this right here is a very easy to mark question where you need to write the importance of rocks. Now, when we talk about rocks, we know that rocks are necessary for various reasons. We know that roads that are there are, help, are made with the help of rocks. We know that they're used in construction of buildings. We know that normally when it comes to small stones and everything, we know that children play with them. And we also know that in some cases, rocks also have a lot of minerals in them. So we know that the minerals are extracted from them as well. So there are various reasons why we use rocks. You can just list them down and you will get two marks for the same. Now let's get moving to the next question, which is what are metamorphic rocks? Now this right here can come as a one marker, it can come as two markers, or you just need to elaborate on the same. Now when you talk about metamorphic, 
metamorpho when we, when this word comes in right that means that we're talking about change in form so in the case of igneous and sedimentary rocks when they are subjected to high temperature and pressure they undergo a change within themselves resulting in the formation of a metamorphic rock so limestone here right we know that limestone which is a sedimentary rock will undergo certain changes and result in the formation of marble which here is a metamorphic rock so you can list here with an example right so as you all know this is the definition that type of rocks which is formed when igneous and sedimentary rocks experience heat and pressure so here you can give an example as well so the example you can write here is marble so there you go we have written all the important subjective questions and we've understood how to write the answer. Now we'll move on to the next set of questions where you need to tick the correct answer and there are a few subparts here. Now this is very simple. So what I would recommend is that as we go from one question to the next, pause the video and try to answer it yourself and see if you got it right. So the first question here is, the rock which is made up of molten magma is which rock? Igneous, sedimentary or metamorphic? Now, when we talk about solidification of molten magma, we're talking about igneous rocks, right? Which is why we also know that we call them as primary rocks. Yes? So, correct answer here is option A. Moving on to the second question. The innermost layer of the earth is which layer? Is it crust, core or mantle? Now, we know that the outermost layer is the crust followed by which we have the mag uh, the mantle that is there and then of course the innermost layer that is there is nothing but the core. So correct answer here is option B, core. Let's have a look at the next question. Gold, petroleum and coal are examples of what? Is it rocks, minerals or fossils? Now this right here is a slightly tricky question, right? Because you might be thinking, but normally when we think about coal, petroleum, right? We know that they are formed from fossils, right? So we know that fossils also have an important role to play. But or is it minerals or is it rocks? Now I know you have this confusion, which is why I'd like to clarify this. The correct answer here is option B, minerals. Because we know that although coal and petroleum are formed from fossils, and we often call them as fossil fuels, we categorize them broadly as minerals. Which is why the correct answer here is option B, minerals. Now let's move on to the next question. Rocks which contain fossils are called as dash. Are they sedimentary rocks, metamorphic rocks, or igneous rocks? Now we know that amongst the three that are listed here, only one has fossils present in them. And we know that the correct answer here is option A, sedimentary rocks which contain fossils, which we often don't find in metamorphic or igneous rocks. Now let's move on to the fifth question under this particular, you know, take the correct answer. The thinnest layer of the earth is what? Is it crust, mantle or coal? Now, when you talk about the thinnest layer, we also know that it is the outermost layer as well. And in this particular case, we know that the thinnest layer is the crust, which is the outermost layer. A large portion is covered by the mantle and then we have the innermost core that is there. So there you go. We've solved all the questions which have come under. Take the correct answer. Now we will move on to the next question, which is a match the following. Now, when we talk about the match the following, we see that we have column one, yes, and we have column two here. Now, what I would recommend all my students watching this video is to pause this video and you try solving it yourself so that you get an idea of how much you know and then you can cross verify the answer. Now, when we talk about the core, right, we know that the core that is there is the innermost layer. Yes. And when we talk about minerals, we know that the minerals that are there basically has a definite chemical composition. Now, we know that rocks that are there are normally used for building roads and buildings and clay is something that changes into slate. Now, when we talk about Cl, right, we know that Cl that is there includes your silicon and your alumina. And we know that this right here is very important because we discussed this when we were talking about the crust that was there. So there you go. I hope you've matched the options and you've got the answer correctly as per this. Now we'll move on to the last set of questions, which is give reason. Now give reason questions are very, very important because sometimes we don't really know what to write for give reason. So here the question is, we cannot go to the center of the earth. Give reason. Now whenever give reason questions are there, just put a why after this. Answer should become easy. We cannot go to the center of the earth. Why? Because we know that in, at the center of the earth, we know that the temperature and pressure is very high. 
Now, when you talk about the temperature, we know that it's approximately around 5,200 degrees Celsius, right? Humans cannot go and survive at such extreme conditions. And we know that even rocks that are there, right? Like nickel, ferrous and everything which is present. We know that they exist in molten form, which is why in this particular case, we cannot go to the center of the earth because it, of the high temperature and pressure that is there. So very simple and easy. Now moving on to the next one. Sedimentary rocks are formed from sediments. Why? Yes, so that is the question. When you have to think about give reason. Now, when we know that sediments are formed when rocks hit against each other and they break, right? Now, these sediments that are there get transported either by wind, they get transported by water. And then we know that these sediments under those conditions, right? They get compressed under high pressure, they get hardened and they form rocks, which we call as sedimentary rocks. Which is why if you see what is formed or how are these sedimentary rocks formed? With the help of these sediments, which is why we are able to justify this statement. So I hope you've written down these two pointers that I have ticked because they are very, very important. Now let's move on to the next one, which is limestone is changed into marble. Give reason. Now when you talk about limestone, right? Limestone is a type of sedimentary rock that is there. And we know that igneous and sedimentary rocks can undergo changes at high temperature and pressure to form metamorphic rocks. Now in this case, limestone is a sedimentary rock. And in high temperature and pressure, your limestone changes into marble, which is an example of a metamorphic rock. So that is why limestone can change into marble. So I hope you've made a note of all the important pointers that we discussed. And as you know, with this particular question, we come to the end of this video. Now, I know that this video would have gone a little longer than you expected, but I hope now you've written all the answers. You've got an idea of how to write answers with whatever you have learned in class. Now, if you enjoy the way we teach and you enjoy the way we learn here, do not forget to hit the subscribe button because we have a lot of interesting videos coming up your way. And if you loved what we do, show us your love by liking this video and sharing this video with all of your friends. Thank you so much for being a part of this class. I hope to see you all soon. But up until then, everybody, take care. Lots of love and bye-bye.